Hey YouTube, it's Nathan here from Summon or Nothing. Today I'm bringing you a video of what's in my bag for Mining Trips up and coming camping video. Normally I'd be packing all of my equipment in my trusty Low Alpine Ascent 4050, uh, which is a wonderful sort of lightweight bag. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the channel will know that I really enjoy this and I've been using it quite a lot. I purchased that bag in an effort to save weight and go as light as possible. That went hand in hand with the use of my tarp and bivy bag setup that I was using for all my camping. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video or the unboxing video for the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite that I've recently purchased, I've been encouraged to go down a route which affords myself a few more creature comforts, if you like. So I'm hoping to have a much better, less grumpy, more cheerful night's sleep, if that's possible. So, without further ado, let me show you the pack that I'm going to be using. This is my Offspray Atmos 65. So, as you can see, it's quite a sizable pack. So, I'm going to go through a few of the things that I'm taking with me, and hopefully that will explain why I've opted for the bigger pack. So, start off with, on the outside, you can see my trusty hiking poles. Uh, the reason I'm taking these is because I intend to borrow Trev's Lanchion 2, which doesn't come with its own poles and relies on tent poles, uh, relies on hiking poles, which is fine because I've been using those for the tarp anyway, and I always like to bring them. I've had a few issues with my knees over the years, so I like to take these just in case. Uh, it sort of guarantees that even if I have a problem, I'll be able to at least hobble home. So they're secured to the outside of the pack. Nothing in that pouch or compartment at this moment in time, but I'll sort of use that for putting my waterproof in maybe, or maybe I'll put a jacket, scarf, hat, something like that. Uh, they're currently inside the bag in my spare clothing sack. Depends how the day or evening goes tomorrow morning. I might start off with more clothing on and as we walk back to the car I might take it off and just stuff it in there. Or also because it's like quite a mesh, you know, when you're walking, if something gets damp, you can sort of leave it in there and it will sort of dry out throughout the day. Next up, we have, if I undo the hood of the bag, we have these two side pockets. Uh, inside this one, waterproof rain cover that came with the bag. And then this side, I have my Ferric House Gators. So they may remain in there for the entire walk. If we get to go hiking, we get to the moors and it's quite damp, they might go on right away. But they're close to hand in those side packets, uh, side pouches, and I can get them without opening up the rest of the bag, which is sort of quite important to me. In the hood of the bag, I have the woolly hat, tissue paper, compass, spork, head torch, a whistle, flint and steel, and a lighter. The bag actually has these side pouches on the waistband, and in this one I've just got a protein bar and the repair kit for the Neo Air X Lite. As you can see here, I've got a water bottle. It's empty at this precise moment in time, but that'll have a litre of water in it. As we roll the pack over, the more eagle-eyed of you, you probably have spotted the fact that I'm carrying a tripod that I don't normally carry. Hopefully that will become explained in a moment. So, part of the reason for carrying the bigger pack, even though everything I'm carrying is sort of packing down smaller and lighter, the I'm not carrying a tarp, I'm not carrying a bivy bag, but I am carrying the Lanchion 2, which packs up as small as those two items anyway. So it sort of makes sense to trade them out for a bit of comfort. But I don't have the bulky roll mat down the side, as the sleeping pad is actually carried inside the bag now. Now that would all fit inside the Alpen, uh, the low Alpen Ascent 4050, but what won't fit in there, uh, as compact as I can make it, landscape photography kit. So in here, I have my main camera, 
For those of you who are interested, it's only a Nikon 7200. It's quite old now, uh, but it does me fine. I've got a standard zoom Sigma lens on the front, which is 17 to 50 millimeters. My shutter release cable. My Tamron 10 to 24 wide angle lens. Uh, I have a few filters, a lens pen, there's a lens cloth, lens cloth in here somewhere, and that's about it. And that goes hand in hand with the tripod. So, if I get my scales out quickly, that bag alone is 2,483 grams. So that's two and a half extra kilos of weight that I'll be carrying just for the camera and the two lenses and then the tripod itself is 1,600 grams so between the two of them that's just over an extra four kilos of weight so you can see or well, get the idea now why I've gone for the bigger and more comfortable pack obviously um, those of you who are familiar with this pack will know about the um, carry system and how comfortable it actually is for longer heavier hikes. I think I've walked with something close to 23 kilos with this before. Um, I think me and Trevor camping in Wisman's Wood maybe or around the Wisman's Wood area. So if you've seen that video you'll see I've got all sorts of tents and god knows what stacked on top and uh, I really struggled towards the end of it with the weight so I'm hoping that this is actually less than that but we will see uh, as we move inside the bag I've got my titanium mug I've got two litres of water I have my food bag which has got some just ad hot water sort of ready meals I suppose a few protein bars, a bag of uh, sweets and some coffees got my spare clothing bag which at this precise moment in time has just got a synthetic feel sort of puffer coat and a neck scarf and then a spare pair of socks. Next up we have the trusty jet foil. Uh, the reason I'm taking this today and not my smaller setup is because Trev's uh, quite kindly offered to give me one of his sort of frozen stews in a bag that I can sort of boil away and my other uh, stove doesn't really do very well with oil in the bags because it's quite a small, small container. But that's you know in good serviceable order. Everything's in there as it should be. God, it has been actually a long time since I used any of this uh, for its intended purpose. Next up is the Neo Air, the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite, uh, the large version. Uh, very small. The main advantage of this, and I'm not entirely sure that I actually stated it in the last video, but this has actually got an R value of 4.2. So it's going to be significantly more insulating from the ground than anything that I've used previously. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. And then last but not least, in the very bottom of the bag, if I can actually get it out, actually I'll go in through the bottom of the bag, is my sleeping bag. There's no actual change here. Those of you who are familiar with the channel, it's my Mountain Hardware Laminar 20. So it actually packs up quite small and quite compact. It's got a comfort rating of minus seven, and inside that I've put the Thermalite Reactor sleeping bag liner, which is meant to add a couple more degrees of comfort to the sleeping bag. But the beauty of that is I've been able to put it in there and it still packs up into its original stuff sack. Now, I don't normally use a stuff sack, I normally just round the sleeping bag in the bivy bag and then just force it into the bottom of the bag, but because I'm not using the bivy bag to sort of add a layer of waterproofing to the sleeping bag, I put it in this original stuff sack to sort of add sort of some sort of protection to it, if you like. Now, when I packed the bag earlier, I actually put the straps in for the partition for the bottom of the bag so it stays separate so the sleeping bag stays separate from everything else but what I was finding is it was actually creating a section that I couldn't pack into because the sleeping bag wasn't filling up the whole bottom of the bag so as we put this back in I've undone the straps 
voltage should enable me to use the full capacity of the pack a bit more efficiently than I was before. Right, so sleeping bag back in, thermal rest pad can go back in already. That's gone much further down than it was before. What I'm trying to do is put anything that's soft and light as far down the bottom of the pack as possible to try and keep the weight as high on my shoulders as I can, uh, just in an effort to add to the comfort. And it will help distribute the load better on my shoulders. Already the sort of dip in the bag at the bottom is starting to fill and it feels like a more efficient use of the space. I'm actually sort of discovering how to pack this as we go. Yeah, that's solid in there. Now, right, so that's the jet boil, the clothing, the sleeping pad, and the sleeping bag. Now I'm putting the food in. That is quite a heavy parcel. It's like a brick that just sits there to one side. The mug is kind of an empty space, really. Normally I used to stuff my socks in there just so I was using the space and it stops it being so rattly. At the moment, that's just going to go in loose. On top of that, I'm going to lie the water. I'm trying to make sure that the camera is above the water, so that if the water does leak, it sort of leaks downwards and not up. Okay. Right. I might need to stand the pack up. There's actually plenty of room in there for the lantern between the camera and the water pack, so that's reassuring that there's going to be still plenty of space. So bear in mind that this pack's only 15 litres bigger than the low, low Alpine um, Ascent 4050. It's actually still pretty damn full already, so I'm starting to get to the point where I'm thinking if I'm going to pursue camping or wild camping and photography at the same time this is going to have to be the pack of choice unless I sort of somehow miraculously can afford to downsize my camera equipment significantly um, but that's you know that's a big big investment so there's the pack getting close to how it should be let's put the tripod back in The great thing about this pack is it's got a wonderful amount of attachment points. And I think if you are considering carrying a heavier load, although the pack itself is heavier, I think it's a sort of, for an extra kilo, it's a worthwhile um, sacrifice to have more comfort if you are considering carrying the heavier pack. I do have uh, camera specific packs that I use when I'm going out just for photography. Uh, I tend to use low pro packs, they're comfortable, they're well thought out, there's plenty of padding in there to look after the camera, but they're just there's no additional space really for carrying anything related to sort of spending the night out in the morning, which is why I've opted for this system. Right, last but not least, sort of try and tidy up all these loose straps to make it look as neat as possible. I know it frustrates trip endlessly when my pack looks neater than his, and I'll be gutted to disappoint him on this occasion. Okay, right. What I'm going to do is, if you bear with me, I will just tidy this bench away and I will get some scales and then we'll find out how much this weighs. Right, so, without the pack, I'm 86.7 kilos. 101.6, that's basically 15 kilos. That's not bad. Bearing in mind there's two litres of water in there, I've got to put another litre of water in my water bottle. So it'll be 16 with the water, probably 17 with the lantern. So that's, that's not too bad. For an overnight camp, I'm fairly happy with that, I can carry that quite easily. Yeah, all right, my bag's been a lot lighter in the past, but even with just one shoulder strap, it really feels surprisingly a lot lighter than what I thought it was gonna do when I first picked it up. 
I'm pretty sure that I can live with that and I'm fairly certain that hopefully in the future I'll be able to ascend a couple of mountains with Trev with this, camp out overnight and still have the uh, camera gear with me to hopefully take some nice photos if the opportunity arises. I hope some of you have found some of that information useful uh, to see what we've got in our pack. All that remains now is to go camping and see if I can actually enjoy myself rather than waking up more miserable than I was when I went to sleep. Ever optimistic, we'll see what happens. Thank you very much for joining. If you like this video, like, comment, share and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.